We were already talking about multiple linear regression. Multiple linear regression is when you have more than one explanatory variable. So most of the time we want to construct a more complex model. So for example, you want to explain the number of votes for a political candidate. Now you might agree with me that there are several factors that determine the number of votes a candidate gets in numerous voting districts. So let's call our candidate Pete and he is a conservative. So we want to explain the number of votes um, the number of votes for our conservative candidate Pete in the single voting districts. Okay, um, what are our observations? Well, our observations are the single voting districts and we want to explain the percentage of the votes uh, the candidate gets. So my first intuition would be that elderly people tend to vote more conservative, while younger people tend to vote for the candidate of the Social Democrats. So our first explanatory variable would be the mean value of age in a voting district. So we have our constant alpha plus a coefficient beta 1 times our variable h. This is our first uh, variable. But there are still more factors that help us explain the number of votes for the conservative candidate. Also rural people tend to vote more conservative. So let's include people per square kilometers. So we got to put in beta 2 times and let's call this variable density okay density um, and let's think about a third variable well also religious people tend to vote for a conservative candidate so you might have an index number that indicates how religious the voting district is so we gotta put in beta 3 times the index number for uh, religion. And of course we got to include um, the error term. So we got to put in epsilon. Okay. Well, it looks like we got ourselves a pretty neat model. Um, so we've included three variables in our analysis to explain the number of votes Pete gets in the single voting districts. Um, the great thing about the multiple uh, linear regression is that it controls for all the variables. That means when you interpret the coefficient, it says that if you increase h, for example, if you increase, increase h by one year, while religion and density stays the same, the number of votes increases by such and such. The other great thing is that we can explain quite a lot. A more complex model might be able to explain more than a model with a single independent variable. So a complex model is always better than a simple, a simple model? No, it isn't. Um, if you include too, ma too many variables or redundant variables, you get several problems. Look at my model. In reality, this might be pretty problematic. Could you imagine why? Because I think these variable, variables would correlate with each other. Old people tend to live in more remote areas and tend to be more religious. So basically these three variables could explain the same phenomena. What would happen if you'd still include these variables? It could happen that only one of those variables bears some statistical significance. That is because the regression analysis is calculating the unique, and this is the important part, or it's only calculating the unique impact the single variables have on our dependent variable. So the best way to go is to have variables that don't correlate extremely with each other. Um, also, you should make sure that you are not forgetting an important variable. Um, there's a great example for this on the web. Um, let, let me show that to you. So let me get that down here. There you go. This is the example I wanted to show you to you. So um, somebody calculated the correlation between chocolate consumption and the number of Nobel Prize winners per 10 million people in the several countries. Well, the first thing done wrong is to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. So they've calculated the Pearson correlation coefficient. They calculated R. Um, obviously, the idea is to calculate the impact of chocolate consumption on the number of Nobel Prize winners per 10 million. Um, so what I would do is a simple linear regression analysis. So let's say we uh, or they calculated R squared and not R. So let's say R squared is um, equal to 0.625 and it would be statistical significant. Well, if you say all of this is total bogus, I'm completely with you. Um, by the way, the idea of this was not to show that chocolate consumption has an impact on the number of Nobel Prize winners, but to demonstrate what I'm doing right now. So 
what variable might explain both chocolate consumption and the number of Nobel Prize winners? Well, maybe the GDP per, uh, per, uh, per hat. So GDP per hat. Okay. Um, the wealthier a nation is, the more chocolate it consumes and the more Nobel Prize winners it produces. So if you'd include GDP per head as an explanatory variable, chocolate consumption becomes statistically insignificant.